Welcome to our spelling video. Holy cow, I forgot to put all my stuff down here. Now welcome to the video. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, I just don't know. All right, so here we go. Welcome to your spelling video for this week. It looks like we've got an interesting one. We're gonna debunk a theory of spelling today. And so, this is going to be interesting, but remember, we're doing this so you can be a better reader, a better writer, and a better communicator with other people, especially when you're reading and writing. All right, so make sure you have your pencil, your glue stick, your scissors with the round tip, the zip top bag or something to carry these things in, and your spelling book, and of course, your spelling words. So let's get started. Looks like we're doing this tricky one, I before E except after C. Everybody knows that, right? Well, we're gonna find some interesting things out today. This, today I'm gonna cut it down straight down the side. I'm gonna come around the end, and then I'm gonna go up the other side. So it's all in one piece. Kinda feels like I'm peeling an orange. All right, so this I before E except after C is something we use for a lot of stuff that we do. We're always saying, this is the way we do it. This is the way we do it. This is the way we do it. But we're going to find today that is not the case. That is not a true rule. It really isn't. But it's a helpful rule sometimes. Okay, so it will help you sometimes. So we're going to cut that off. And so what I'm telling you here is this is tricky. And if you don't get these all correct all the time, I think you'll be okay. Because the trick is, and this, this is going to happen with some of these different spellings of words, is we live in a modern age. We live in a modern age of um, spell check. But you cannot rely on spell check because spell check does not always tell us what word to use. If we don't get it kind of right, then it won't be able to help us. It'll give us options, but we got to make sure we have that. So I didn't have to trim it off. I just want to make sure that it doesn't overlap on the top on that. And now I'm going to cut this out. I'm actually going to leave these all together at the very beginning because that way I can write out my, my little patterns. So now I'm going to cut this straight down or straight up and then straight up here. And then I'm going to cut them out three at a time. And that will help us to be able to get through this pretty quick. So. If you need help, go ahead. If you need to stop this video to, to catch up or to get this done, do it. You can pause this video at any time so that you can um, use the bathroom if you need to. Go ahead, but pause it. You don't want to miss any of this great information. All right, so I just want you to spread these out. Make sure you say them as you are spreading them out. That way you can see which words you know and which ones you don't. If you're unsure of how to say a word, ask your teacher, a parent, your neighbor, um, your puppy, your kitty, uh, if they talk, if they do, wow, that's pretty amazing. But if they don't, then ask somebody that does talk. All right, so just say the words as you're laying them out. Make sure you do that, though. All right, <clears throat> so here we go. Got to do a little stretch. All right, here we go. Lay this across because we're not going to do this top row. Sometimes I like to write some things in there. But we're going to do right here, we're going to do I-E equals the E sound. And if it's like this and there's no super secret things on the top, that is an E sound. That's a long E. Long E. E, just like that. This one's, and then we're going to put a line underneath it. Ooh, come on. Put a line underneath it. Beautiful. Then we're going to go C-E-I equals 
the E sound. Those slashes just mean it's the E sound, okay? Now we're gonna do another one, and this one's gonna be tricky. It's the E I that is equal to the long E sound. Isn't that interesting? So we got long E, long E, long E, and then we've got this last one that's E I, which equals the A sound. And this is where it gets a little tricky, all right? And this is where that I, be I before E, except after C. Look, there's an I before E. There's the E or the I before E, except after C. Then you change them. I E changes to C E I. But look, there's an E I also. There's no C after before that. And this one's got an E I, and there's no. See after that. So this is not really a true rule. It does not go for everything, but it's a good guide. So if you do this rule on almost everything, it will still be okay. The, the, when you do a spell check, um, it'll show you the correct word, because if you just mix a couple letters up, it'll be okay. All right, make sure you cut these up and put these in your zip top bag. Now the spelling we're going to do today, you've got to say the words so you can hear it. you got to say it so you can say it and you'll hear it. So let's do the first I before E except after C. Let's do thief. E. E. Thief. That would be a true I before E except after C. I before E. Beautiful. Thief. This IE is going to have the E sound, a long E. All right? So far, so good? Good. Now, let's do a, a C word. Let me find this one. Oh, receive. C, I before E, except after C. R E C E I V E. So if there's a C, it will always be an E right after it. E-I. Receive. E-C-E-I-V-E. -E. All right, so we're going to underline that also. So remember that. I before E except after C. This one's the key right there. This one will always be that way. This and this have the long E sound. And this is where it gets a little more tricky. Okay? Because if we do this word right here, where did I do it? If I do C's, C's, S-I-E-Z-E, -E, that doesn't, that's not spelled correctly. So it's not an I before E. So let's put that right here, S-E-I-Z-E. -E. So the C will always work. Now, if you put this into a spell check and you say S-I-E-Z-E, -E, it's going to show you that it's wrong. And when it does that, just switch the letters. You can do that. That's fine. Is that going to help you on a spelling test if you have to do a spelling test with these? No. Uh, but I don't know when you have to do a spelling test in your adult life. You know what I'm saying? But in... in uh, but this will help you right here to get this idea of it's not always true, but if you do it this way and it tells you it's wrong, then just switch them. All right? Now, let's get to the next one because this one's interesting. If it's got a long A sound like in neighbor, it's always going to be the E-I because that A sound, which is e i G-H is actually part of that. That's kind of silent there. E-I-G-H, nay, burr. That A sound makes it an E and an I. So when you look at all the rest of these and you say, wow, is this I before E except after C always true? No, it's not. You can do this and it will help you out. But when you have an A sound, it's always E-I. 
A-E-I. When if there's a C, it's E-I. A-E-I. C-E-I. These two are the tricky ones. If you go with the I-E with most of the time, if it tells you it's wrong, change it. All right? So what I need you to do is I need you to go through all the rest of these and say the words. Say them. And if you don't know how they're said, then look at this. The I-E is an E. The E-I is an E. The E-I is an E. If it's an E-I-G-H, it's an A sound. So say the words that way. Say them. Do it. Make sure you understand how they're said so that you can spell them correctly. Don't just run through this as fast as you can. Say the words. Make sure you understand what's going on. All right. If you have questions, ask your teacher or ask your parents. Um, rock and roll. Do the best you can. Pay attention to this so you understand how to spell these words. It's important for you to learn to spell, though. Could help you out in many different ways, especially communicating with others. All right. Have a good day. See ya.